dropping flashes. Um, we used to call it Easter egging. And uh, by the way, these are the little flash cue triggers. This is a, a transmitter that sits on top of your hot shoe. You can buy a package with either a transmitter and receiver, or better value is transmitter and a two receivers. Right now, there's one on the base of this SB26 uh, Nikon Speedlight, which is an old Speedlight. Typically, you can grab for like 50 bucks. It's my favorite old Speedlight on the cheap. At about 45, 50 bucks. Um, these run off of a 20, 25 watch batteries, which are the most common watch battery. You can buy like a three pack of them for five dollars at the dollar store. Even dollar stores carry them. Um, the important thing about this video is, what have you thought about? And this always scares people. Flash photography always scares people. And you would have to set the power output on these speed lights manually. So if you go back and step back and take a test shot, you know, you figure you need to raise or lower the power, you have the option of setting these, the speed lights, in manual uh, power output or automatic, which uh, uses uh, a uh, quench on the speed light via the sensor right on the front of the speed light right here. Uh, actually sometimes auto mode works better than TTL. Everybody thinks everything has to be TTL and speed lights and any professional photographer that's worked with studio strobes and a lot of speed light rolls their eyes at that BS notion. It is really good for uh, paparazzi work and uh, sports action and uh, photojournalism. TTL is a godsend. Basically however for everything else auto is perfectly fine. Um, but dropping speed lights, have you ever thought about, and the reason I have this on a cord is I can actually, it serves two purposes. The speed light that I can actually uh, holster it around my neck, off of my side, and uh, use this as a fill flash uh, with uh, my Nikon or my Fuji cameras, but also dropping these. You know, dropping behind a bush, dropping them behind or inside something that's translucent. Um, if you got you know, a couple speed lights. You could drop them inside of a translucent vase. Put your camera on a tripod. Think outside of the box. You could actually hang this on the waist behind someone's back and pose them and to use ambient light either behind the person or in front but use the light that comes from behind to silhouette the person for really amazing portraiture. You know, people always want a million test shots, and I make a lot of videos fast and on the fly. But I mean, I've been doing this now for 15 years, well, longer than that. Uh, back then, we didn't have these radio uh, triggers to do that with. Um, we had to use uh, long uh, sync cables, which I think I've still got a couple of them in the basement, but things are so much easier now. And also the fact that you can chimp on your pictures immediately and figure out what it is you need to set. So don't be scared by uh, this sort of uh, flash photography. I mean, think of what you can do by popping a, uh, a receiver on the base of uh, one of your uh, uh, Nikon speed lights or whatever speed lights it is that you use. And, you know, think of, you know, what sort of photographic opportunities that you have that... I have a cord on this also for hanging it from things. I mean, uh, you can hang it from a tree, uh, up in a tree, and use it to illuminate a tree. In a dusk scene, you can expose for the ambient light, and then raise this up to uh, like one quarter power behind a translucent bush, or a uh, fill flash, uh, you know, on a miniature tripod. One of the little uh, gobi, gobo tripods that are pointed up behind a bush that's pointed up uh, at someone's face. Or use it uh, as background silhouette lighting. The opportunities are amazing and just damn endless. And I see so few people utilizing this uh, wonderful uh, tool that's so much fun and it's really so damn easy. It's not hard at all. People think, well, it's another level of exposure that I have to think about. Well, well so what? You will learn to do it in a night. You will screw up for about an hour, probably less than an hour. And then it will click in your brain, and then you'll be using these all the time for uh, fill illumination, for special effect illumination. Like I say, take an interior shot, place this inside of a translucent vase. You know, place it, uh, take a shot uh, outside of a house, or, uh, you know, late at night uh, outside of like an old shed, and place it just underneath the window. So when you take the shot outside the abandoned house, that there's light pouring through the window. And man, that really just makes your photos go from crap to uh, fantastic at the speed of light. I mean, it really does. There, there. I can make a thousand videos, literally. I mean, I crap you not. 
a thousand videos on the neat different ways that you can pop these on uh, the base of your speed lights and then place them, or that's why we used to call it Easter egging. We'd actually place these speed lights like Easter eggs. We have to think creatively outside of the box, not what we can see with our eyes, what we can see with our mind. It's like, what if I put this behind a plant? What if I hung it from a tree? What if I put this speed light underneath a window inside of an abandoned building? What if, listen closely, if I put this in a Ziploc bag and put a rock inside the Ziploc bag and then Ziploc it again and then take a shot of a, of a pond and drop this to, you know, like a, a foot or two underneath the water and then, uh, you know, illuminate the pond from underneath people. How on earth did you take that shot? It's like, well, it was really complicated. I stuck a wireless trigger on a speed light, and then I stuck it inside two Ziploc bags. Oh, my God, that's so creative. And it's not hard to do. It's really not hard to do. Okay, thanks. Bye.